Hi, my name is Mike, and today I'm going to be adding a, a momentary bypass button to the race head on this Tascam recorder. Um, the reason why you want to do this is if you're trying to record tape loops and you want an uh, endless tape loop, um, but the, st the space between the record and the erase head, that little space it will give you a, a skip or a, um, a pop in your loop. So we're going to use a normally closed push button switch, meaning these two points are always uh, connected until you press the button and then it breaks that connection. So I'm going to wire that in line of the erase head. Um, the same process uh, will work on other recorders that um, have an electronic erase head. And a recorder like this, it won't work because uh, you can see like when I press play, the erase head is not coming down. Um, but when I record, so and you can also see that there are no wires connected to the erase head here. So this is just like a magnet. It's not an electromagnet. Um, but on a, re a task cam recorder, I don't know if the GoPro will actually pick it up in there, but there's actually, you can see there are wires connected to the erase head and the erase head comes up with the play head. So you know that it's still moving up, but it's not engaging. So it's electric, basically. Uh, so that's an easy way to tell. Uh, so now I will just take it apart and show you the next step. So there's only three screws, and then there's these three little indentions. Oh, sorry. There's three little kind of indentions here. You can kind of pry up. And also, there's these little tabs, or these little holes. So we can take a little screwdriver. So once you get that popped open, that just folds back there. So here's the record head, the black right here. I've traced all the little wires. They kind of come out here and then fold back. There are all these little gray wires here, which then come to this connector. So, I'm guessing they're all going to have a common ground. So let's look at this. They all have a black. Each wire has a black. So I'm assuming each of these blacks are going to be the common ground, but we'll confirm that once we get the, this board out. Alright, so next I'm going to um, probably mark all these connectors uh, just so to make sure I don't get anything uh, mixed up and then start taking everything apart so I can get to this. I want to get to the bottom of this board here and confirm what I'm thinking. Alright, I just put some red dots on all of the different connectors in different spots. They're all different sizes, so I'm not really worried about getting them confused, but just to make sure. I like the little red marks and everything. So. I guess I'm going to have to take out the tape assembly here because it looks like it's under, or the board's under that. So these I do not have to mark because it looks like they're already color-coded each of the connectors there. Now it looks like there's little tabs here. The board fits just under. There we go. Here is our connector that we're looking at, and let's make tape assembly again. So every other one is that black one I was looking at. Black, white, black, white, black. So, all right. So starting here, let's look at every where they where those trace out to. And 
just as I thought. First one connects to the third one and on and on. So that looks like that's probably ground. And even if it's not, it's a common. So I'm going to have to break that common connection and send it to one side of my switch. And then the other side of my switch will go back to that ground. So I think Hmm. I don't know if I want to cut and splice these wires here. don't think I really want to do that. I think what I'm going to do is cut the pins or desolder them. Pull them. Actually, it's probably easier if I just cut the pin, every other pin, cut the ground pins. Then I'm going to wire a jumper between each of those. And then finally, one of those will jump out to the switch. That leg, the other leg will jump back to ground, which I think, look at that. This comes around to here. So we'll just use that. So we'll come back to that one. The leg of the switch will come back to here. And the others will be the incoming ground. OK. Okay, I got all the ground pins cut. I just first marked them with black and cut the pin and bent it to the side slightly just so I'm making sure it's not making contact. Uh, I originally did it without the connector connected. I would suggest doing it with the connector connected because it bent the pins and I it had a hard time getting this reconnected. Okay, I got my little jumper strip bent out from this wire. And I'm just going to wire it or solder it in place to jump all the grounds together. Okay, so that's really it for the modification. It's just a normally closed push button, uh, momentary push button switch wired right to there. So now I'm just gonna figure out where I'm gonna be drilling the holes or the hole. Um, I'm gonna place this. Normally, this mounts in the other side of the case, but I'll just place it here to figure out where we're gonna mount the hole. I already have an idea. Yeah. So it's going to be right in here, which puts it basically right between the LED and the counter, the little counter displays.
Okay. So you can still see here a pop, but that is due to basically to my splicing job, my bad splicing job. Um, but now it can record an endless loop without that gap between the erase and record playheads. Two, three, 